morning. It's now time to begin the Commission's regularly scheduled meeting, as we always do. We have uh, the first item the agenda related to take up and allow uh, people who have signed up to speak to us to uh, uh, have that opportunity. We have a large number of speakers this morning, so I'm asking each of them to restrict their remarks uh, to no longer than two minutes and please try not to be repetitive. If you're part of an organization and somebody else has already made the points, there's no problem with you simply stating that you're in concurrence with the previous speaker or whomever the speaker may be. We have a timer over here and uh, we'll let you know uh, that it's going to take more than two minutes if your time is up. Good morning. This is Dr. Sandy Ross from Health and Habitat Mill Valley. My first witness sensitivity when an associate slumped when, and became incoherent in the vicinity of power lines. She later showed me that this happens in all electromagnetic and radio frequency fields. <clears throat> Artificial electromagnetic fields can interact with the fundamental biological process of our bodies because we are a bioelectrical system. This is the essence of this 600 and 65-page bioinitiative report, which I hope some of you will look at. Uh, the military has known this for half a century and <clears throat> has many studies proving it. Typical acute system, systems include headache, insomnia, exhaustion, tingling, nausea, palpitations, and increased blood pressure, and a general reduction from prior level of functionality. Smart meters produce both electromagnetic magnetic fields and radio frequency radiation. Pulsed signals between meters, poles, and the station are reported to be up to a thousand times stronger than cell phones, but PG&E computes the force of the pulse over the time between them, thus pretending it's weaker. These meters also put frequency on electrical lines which get re-radiated throughout our buildings, raising EMF fields. Public Utilities Code requires your commission to ensure that public utilities furnish adequate, efficient, just, and reasonable services instrumentalities, equipment, and facilities as are necessary to promote the safety, health, and comfort convenience of your patrons. I request the CPUC adhere to this section of their code and follow the Marin County Board of Supervisors' request to protect, to protect the health and safety of energy users. And I have copies of your letter here for you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Julene Lipson, Dr. Julene Lipson. I'm a retired professor from UCSF. And uh, my last study that I did was pe with people with uh, multiple chemical sensitivities. I found some, wow. similar I found some similarities uh, between uh, these people and people who have developed uh, health effects to the smart meters and other uh, um, radio frequency radiation, such as uh, they've become ill from the environmental exposures. Um, there's a lot of disbelief from people who hear about it. And a lot of them, or some of them, are becoming disabled. Uh, I'm going to share the words, despite the physiological things that uh, Dr. Ross has mentioned. I'm going to just, um, I believe that real words of real people who are experiencing this are equally valuable to physiological studies. These examples come from a couple of internet chat lists. Alameda County. The PG&E front line won't listen to anything I say about how hellish the radio frequency radiation is making my life, and this is because of the smart meters. There are 32 of them in close proximity to my bedroom. I'm getting fried alive. It makes me very ill. I have a lot of trouble concentrating. I feel overstimulated and agitated. I feel on the verge of panic most of the time. I can't relax or sleep. It's sort of a nightmare, 24-7. The only time I feel calm is when I go to the countryside. Alameda County, vertigo, the sound of my blood pulsing through my ears all the time at home, hyperarousal, inability to focus or relax, interrupted sleep, pressure in my head between my ears, increased headaches, and less frequency, heart racing, anxiety, nausea, and shakes. Yeah. Here's one from Sonoma County. I felt increasingly bad, palpitations, irregular heartbeat, headaches, dizziness, weakness, emotional distress, anxiety and inner agitation, especially when up that side of our house. Uh, in the country, my headache would go away, but symptoms would come back as soon as I came back home. Santa Cruz County, when the meter was first installed, okay. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Joshua Hart. I'm a resident of Scotts Valley in Santa Cruz County. 
Um, I've got a master's degree in transportation planning and experience working in the utility industry. I'm the director of the Scotts Valley Neighbors Against Smart Meters. We are a growing grassroots group of Scotts Valley residents who believe we need to stop installing smart meters until we have answers about their safety <coughs> and accuracy. Last week, Scotts Valley and Cap Capitola took a bold stand uh, along with a growing number of local governments throughout the state uh, and they signed on to both the San Francisco and the EMF Safety Network petitions asking the Public Utilities Commission to put a moratorium on any further smart meter installation until we know that these meters are accurate and until we know that they're safe. We know neither at this point. We believe that automated meters aren't necessarily a bad thing. Many places in Europe use wired meters with fiber optic technology. We believe we need to be more aware of our energy usage. But smart meters have been a huge miscalculation. We can carry on installing them, like uh, pretending that nothing is wrong, or we can admit that there are problems, investigate those problems, and not make things worse than they already are. The vast majority of long-term non-industry funded studies show a connection between cell phone use and brain tumors. The recently released Interphone study shows a 40% increase in brain tumors connected with heavy cell phone use. The San Francisco Board of Supervisors recently passed a Right to Know Act requiring cell phone retailers to, to list the uh, radiation levels uh, at the point of sale. Do we really want to unleash this technology when there are serious uh, scientific evidence of health impacts? We want to unleash it across all of our communities throughout California. In Scotts Valley, there's an apartment building with 22 meters on one wall. Uh, this could be feet from where a child is sleeping. Um, I, I think that you know this commission does not want to be responsible for the potential long-term health effects. And indeed, pg &E admits there is no cumulative or long-term health effects about these meters. Smart meters' uh, radiation levels exceed uh, EMF safety levels set by uh, countries like Russia and precautionary levels uh, in places like Austria. So in conclusion, uh, if you ignore the science, History and perhaps class action lawsuits will hold you responsible. Respectfully, we ask you to uh, approve both the EMF safety uh, network request and the city of San Francisco request and put a halt to these, this smart meter program. Thank you so much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Toral Gelder. I'm a board certified pediatrician practicing in Walnut Creek, California. My area of special interest is medical and environmental as aspects of autism. Thank you for giving me the opportunity of speaking with you today. As we all know, there's an autism epidemic raging amongst our children today, and no end in sight. 30 years ago, the numbers were 1 in 10,000, 1 in 100. The numbers continue to rise ever faster. At this rate, most of our children will be autistic within two de generations. We used to think autism was a genetic illness, but there is no such thing as a genetic epidemic. There have to be environmental factors because genes can't change this fast. My mission is to improve the lives of autistic children and their families in the safest, most effective, and affordable manner possible. With this in mind, I recently reviewed the Bioinitiative Report by Dr. Carpenter and Cindy Sage. This is the most comprehensive and scientifically vigorous information I have found to date on this topic of EMF and health effects. I was horrified when within the first 20 pages, I found 12 problems that detrimental EMF can cause that have also been identified in many of the children with autism. These are increase in allergic reactions, sleep problems, effect on electrical activity of the brain, morphine-like effects, increased oxidative stress, behavioral problems, difficulties learning, memory problems, increased inflammation, leaky cell membranes, cell metabolism problems, electrohypersensitivity. I request that at least one person at CPUC and one person in government read and understand the Bioinitiative report before permitting a further rollout of smart meters. I demand on behalf of millions of children that are unable to speak, that can think and feel like you and I, an immediate moratorium on smart meters till adequate research has been completed. If you are unable or unwilling to do this today, I request that a fund be established for all the loss of life, lives, and livelihood. BP is doing this for those devastated by oil in the ocean. Our children deserve as much for the de devastation of their minds and bodies. Thank you. We as a nation go to other countries to find weapons of mass destruction and at home we place them on every home and we call them smart meters. Our children deserve better than to be mere collateral damage. Thank you very much for your time. I am Marty Kia from El Cerrito and I'm here to urge the CPUC to immediately honor the EMF Safety Network application for modification of DO607027 and DO903026. <coughs> 
I'm an author, a visiting scholar at UC Berkeley at the Division of Society and Environment, as well as the owner of a small holistic health business. I have clients and friends who have electrohypersensitivity who literally fear for their lives at the prospect of having to live with smart meters. One of the central issues for me is the right of every citizen to be able to protect themselves from unnecessary forms of pollution and the corollary obligation of government ins institutions to enforce such protections. And electromagnetic radi radiation is a form of pollution or electrosmog, probably the most dangerous form of pollution that exists. But PG&E is too focused on figuring out how to maximize their profits to worry about the health and safety of its customers. To add insult to injury, PG&E is planning to cut its costs by laying off workers and then charge its customers more. CP, the CPUC should not let them get away with this. PG&E claims that the meters meet the FCC guidelines. Although this is questionable, it is not the most important issue. The most important issue is whether the FCC guidelines are adequate to begin with, as explained previously. Even the EPA acknowledges their inadequacy in a 2002 letter from Norbert Hankin, in which he states, I believe that it is correct to say there is uncertainty about whether or not current guidelines adequately treat non-thermal prolonged exposures, exposures that may continue on an intermittent basis. But PG&E knows better. They know that the guidelines are so safe that they're ready to force us to submit to a massive experiment of unprecedented <coughs> proportions. While the CPU takes time in deliberating whether to call for more touring, PG is working overtime to install meters throughout the state. Once they're installed, it's going to be a lot harder to take them out. But we're under siege right now, and the time for leisurely contemplation has long since passed. We need the moratorium to be enforced immediately so that independent studies can be done to assess the health, safety, and accuracy of the meters. Thank you. Morning, Commissioner. I would like to read a letter from lawyer and Fairfax Council Member Larry Bragdon. Wanted to be here today, but was unable to because of the course um, case. Dear Commissioners, I am writing to convey my observations about Pacific Gas and Electric Company's deployment of its smart meter program in the town of Fairfax. The Fairfax Town Council has received numerous written and live comments from local residents who are extremely apprehensive about the ongoing installation of these devices in our town. Their concerns break down into five broad categories. One, health concerns. There is a large percentage of individuals who choose to live in Fairfax because of its pristine environment and its local government's rigorous attempts to adhere to the precautionary principles. The fact that the smart meter program will create a pervasive electromagnetic field, EMF, in our community is of great concern to many residents. Electromagnetic sensitivity has been recognized as a condition under the Americans with Disabilities Act, and recent peer-reviewed literature has suggested potential health risks to chronic exposure. Because the smart meter network is a mesh network, it's impossible to, pre to predict individual levels of exposure. Numerous residents have posted their property with signs demanding that their meters be left in place. Two, security risks. The security issues inherent in the smart meter program were analyzed in depth by the Maryland Pas Public Service Commission decision denying a very similar AMI program in Baltimore. At pages 35 to 40, the commission stated, cybersecurity in the context of the smart grid refers to the security of the information passing over the communications of the smart grid, as well as security of the controls over system components. AMI is an enormous complex of inter interconnected networks designed to administer dynamic pricing and manage grid function. Such an extensive network is vulnerable to security risk in many different ways, including physical tampering, intercepting or blocking the wireless signals that connect the smart meters to data collection points or obtaining customer password information used to the web portal. Unauthorized access, access to smart meters would allow a hacker to artificially increase energy bills or shut off power entirely. Three, privacy. Okay, here's, your time is up, man. If you would Give the letter to our executive director. He'll make sure that all five commissioners receive it. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, my name is Tale Lafi Rosalini. As a young man, 
I was the longest serving Peace Corps volunteer in one country, I believe in the history of the Peace Corps, that still, record still stands. And uh, today I am an award winning documentary filmmaker and I make films mainly focusing on how children learn from their parents and grandparents and how knowledge is passed down from generation to generation in West Africa, where I've learned five African languages, I'm fluent in two of those, and three European languages. And I've lectured all over the United States and internationally about African culture and documentary filmmaking, and have taught in the schools from preschool all the way to graduate school all across this nation and in Western Europe and the Caribbean. Now I'm here today to ask you and plead with you to please adopt the resolution, the petition from the EMF Safety Network. This is so important. My father was a doctor who got up in the middle of the night who helped people. My mother was a volunteer at the Children's Hospital, Orthopedic Hospital in Seattle. And on his last day of his life, my father saved the life of a woman. I come from a space and a, a informed from a, a commitment to helping people. And I believe that this is the greatest threat to our existence on the planet of Earth. Mainly, the, uh, the, we are getting 100 million times the EMF exposure that our grandparents got. We have 100 trillion cells, and they all need to be able to communicate. And in this paper I gave you is the, uh, rep, uh, the homepage of the conference that happened last November, a major international conference on the effects of EMF in Stavanger, Norway. Norway is the number one country on the planet, according to the United Nations, in the Human Development Index. So please give respect and pay attention to the credentials of all those specialists came from all over the world and lectured about the effects of EMF and radiation on the people. The people of, of California need to be protected as well as the people of, of the United States. And this goes beyond our borders. There are a billion people in Africa and the one in the last 15 years, there are 10 million dead people thanks to the pursuit of coltan, which it makes the, is, you know, is one of the ingredients, one of the materials that is necessary for the functioning of cell phones and I believe that wireless must be gr grossly checked, including the smart meter. Please join and adopt the resolution of this uh, EMF safety network. Thank you so much for your kindness and patience, patience to be able to speak to you today. Thank you. Thank you. Power to the people. Hi, I'm Susie Skull, and I'm a marriage and family therapist. PG&E states that those of us who suffer symptoms from the wireless smart meter, that it's all in our head, Without my knowing it, two smart meters were installed in my house and I became alarmingly sick with innumerable symptoms. Obviously, I could not have known it, that it was in my, it could have been in my head. When the ADA Commission in 2004 stated that electromagnetic sensitivity qualified for protection within the workplace, I don't think they thought it was all in our head. Meanwhile, because of the deployment of these smart meters, I do not even have a place to live, let alone work. I don't know where I'm going to go. My forefather, Thomas Paine, would be appalled. It's easy for you to think of I and others as anomalies and to dismiss our cases. We may be the canary in the coal mine, but 35% of the population is electromagnetically sensitive now, according to the magazine First. It's easy to go into denial, it's easy to blame our condition psychosomatically, but I want to remind you that countless diseases, including epilepsy, cancer, and now ulcers, were initially dismissed as not having physical causes. The scientific evidence is in. The EPA in 1990 cited EMF as a probable carcinogen, but the telecom utility and military bullied them out of it. Obama's current cancel panel lists non-iodizing microwave RF radiation as a carcinogen and the need for precautionary, not reactionary legislation. Commissioner Simon at the participation meeting wanted information regarding RF radiation when we suggested fiber optics as an alternative. I sent him that information and I requested a meeting for to get together and I had no response. And additionally, I want to know what he meant when after the meeting he mentioned under his breath, well, you know, we'll put them in and if everyone gets sick, then we'll try something else. It's quite abominable. I was told that your response to the city's and county's request for a moratorium could take six more months. It will be too late. 30,000 meters are being installed a day. This is an emergency. We have an inferno, and the CTOC doesn't even see a fire, let alone a bushfire. So I ask you kindly now, with all five commissioners here, to enact a moratorium today. If the smart meter is so benign, why the rush to install, even as one investigation is already underway? So please, I ask you to do the right thing, what we the people ask, not what we the corporations ask. 
be cutting edge like the state of Maryland and enact a moratorium on all smart meters now. Thank you. Hello, I'm a resident of Marin County and on July 20th, our uh, Marin Board of Supervisors wrote, uh, voted to write you a letter uh, requesting a moratorium on the installation of smart meters. And they added a request to hold a hearing on the health effects to have uh, an opportunity for us to present the huge body of non-industry funded science that exists on this subject. I know that you probably haven't heard about this before, but that's why we need a hearing. It has been very effectively blocked. This science has been um, in place since the 50s when the military started noticing more uh, an elevated uh, rate of cancer and health effects in its uh, military personnel exposed to radar. So this is, uh, it's not like this is a new thing, it's more like um, the tobacco uh, situation and uh, the climate change denials uh, who have been using a lot of uh, highly funded PR to obfuscate the, the science that's out there. So I, I really uh, would appreciate that the, um, the standards are totally uh, unprotective of human health. We have the right to decline to have a cell phone. We can opt out of cell phones. We can opt out of personal Wi-Fi. PG&E is not allowing us to opt out of being exposed to this wireless um, radio frequency radiation that will be everywhere, everywhere. So it's a huge uh, additional layer to the already problematic uh, electromagnetic pollution. Um, and I, I would like to um, uh, ask you also to act on the application of the EMF safety networks modification. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I obviously don't have to tell the commissioners that considerable alarm has arisen about the deployment of the smart meters and particularly focused on it seems like the wireless communication, privacy and security issues and a perception that our household could be controlled by the utility in uh, major ways. I believe that it would be actually wise to put a moratorium on this, uh, on this deployment at this point so that the discussion can become fact-based and, and more fact-based and lead constructive mitigation of legitimate concerns. However, I'd like to reinforce what the Commission, I'm sure, already knows, which is that smart meters and the smart grid are critical to the building of a, uh, of a renewable infrastructure, which we all envision. Uh, we, we really cannot throw out the whole concept. What we need to do is address the issues with this rollout, which I think there are legitimate issues. Um, for those of us who work with renewable energy and the people who are meeting right now in San Jose about electric vehicles, a smart grid is absolutely essential to, to the plans that are being laid out. To make a moratorium productive, I believe that CPUC needs to work with PG&E, direct PG&E, to allow their engineering staff to answer the questions of technically competent but trusted citizen representatives and through CPUC to support a constructive process of informing the citizenry and uh, mitigating concerns to the greatest degree possible. I have a short write-up that I can pass on to the commissioners. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Melissa Weaver. Good morning, commissioners. Thank you for having us. My name is Melissa Weaver. I'm CEO of Enhanced Health Systems and founder and coordinator of the Center for Sustainable Health. I've been a health consultant and um, environmental health educator and consultant for over 30 years. And more recently, I've focused in the past eight years on the effects of EMF and more specifically RF wireless radiation. I have been giving presentations all over Northern California in the past several years and have researched this topic um, in depth. I first want to um, 
add on to what a previous speaker had spoken about um, the FCC standards being obsolete. Many parts of and countries and the rest of the world are adopting new exposure standards based on the bioinitiative report that has been presented to you this morning. Um, this bioinitiative report is acknowledging that not only the thermal effects, which is what the FCC is only acknowledging the thermal effects, but the non-thermal effects that are causing bio biological damage to tissue. Um, one minute, my God. Okay. <laughs> Um, the other thing is that in Richard Tell's report that you can find on PG&E's website, even he himself says they're only measuring one energy output of one meter. And when this meter is hooked up to a mesh network of 1,000 to 5,000 meters that are communicating simultaneously, even he himself states that he has no idea what the energy output is going to be. It's going to be too erratic. Um, the, there's, it's a time average that, according to PG&E, um, is measured every 45 seconds, but when the mesh network is connected, this is happening second after second after second, and a huge energy spike has been measured to be 100 to 200,000 times higher than the FCC standards, which we know are obsolete. I also want to speak to the um, interference. Ottawa, Canada, when they um, employed, employed their grid, there was massive amounts of interference because they were using the, 900, the public bands, 900 megahertz and 2.4 gigahertz, and two-way ham radio operators could not get a signal, baby monitors were interfered with cordless phones, and so forth. I also want to say that PG&E is saying that there's no jobs lost, but five years ago they phased out their employees and all this, the meter readers today are temporary um, independent contractors. So I implore you to act now, and um, I represent over a thousand people in my database who are electrosensitive, and they need you to protect them. Thank you very, very much. And I learned in college when I took my business courses that the customer comes first. And it doesn't look like to me that PG&E is looking to its ratepayers and customers. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. That concludes uh, today the number of people speaking on that particular topic of smart meters and the, and the relationship to other matters, including EMF and all. Uh, for those of you who are in the audience, uh, the, the PUC did, this is public information, the PUC did commission a study that's underway now uh, on uh, the PG&E performance on the meters and the accuracy of the meters and so forth. Not in the air, but in all the other areas. And that report uh, will be um, completed uh, in approximately five to six weeks. Not the end of the year, but in, 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 in Yes, but they're being installed as that investigation. Yes. I mean, no, we understand. I understand. Okay, yeah. we have other public speakers. Thank you all very much that have a big interest in the subject. Ms. Hood? Thank you yes, very much. one minute, please. Thank you very much for your consideration. Um, <coughs> we would like the CPUC to thoroughly determine the accuracy and safety of the devices. Oh, am I on? You are. Yeah, okay, through a study conducted by an independent disinterested party before it's deployed. I have over 600 signatures that I'd like to leave with you. Um, there are three other areas too. One is privacy concerns. There's a growing consensus that the smart meter program does not have adequate privacy controls. Uh, another one is that accuracy, as the Commission is well aware, there have been hundreds of reports of unexplained billing spikes that have not been resolved. Uh, some of the floors held hearings about these. And then in third facts, we have something called conflicts of law and authority. Smart meter antenna have been deployed in Fairfax's public right of ways without the consultation of town staff. Fairfax's wireless telecommunication ordinances have long required that any party seeking installation of wireless antenna obtain a use permit from the Fairfax Planning Commission. Fairfax Municipal Code Chapter 19.04. I believe that the town of Fairfax has authority to enforce compliance with its ordinances under Public Utilities Code Section 6203 and 2902. And thank you very much. I'm a resident of Berkeley. It's one of those many cities that have, um, uh, that where the city council has uh, asked for a moratorium. Um, uh, I'm requesting that you honor the EMF uh, safety networks uh, application, you know, by now, but 100418, uh, application for modification of D0607027 and D0903026. Um, it was filed in April 6th. And um, the reasons for this have been presented today, health and safety issues, um, inaccuracy problems, efficiency, uh, savings questions, uh, privacy. Um, so I'd like you to, or urge you to study all the materials presented to you and to ha uh, have a moratorium as soon as possible, halting installation and opting out 
allowing people to opt out of this. Thank you. Thank you.